Hi, I'm Carol Andrews for another episode of Southwest TV News. Here are some of the stories we've been working on for today's show. Hot temperatures following ongoing rainfall is a prime formula for an increase in the mosquito population. And now through August, you're reminded to take extra precautions, as the Culex tarsalis or mosquito carrying the West Nile virus is more common. According to the latest data from the Saskatchewan Ministry of Health, surgical wait times are decreasing in the province, while showing progress in the overall goal of not waiting longer than three months for any patient. Flying enthusiasts from across Canada made a stopover in Swift Current, en route to Charlottetown, PEI. The Swift Current Airport was the host site for the stopover this year, meeting the qualifications of a five-hour travel time for all of the participants and the capability to host approximately 80 planes. Thanks for joining us here today. Now through the end of August is prime West Nile virus season, and health experts continue to remind you to protect yourself. Hot temperatures following ongoing rainfall is a prime formula for an increase in the mosquito population. And now through August, you're reminded to take extra precautions, as the Culex tarsalis or mosquito carrying the West Nile virus is more common. Yes, it's a, it's a very much a loves hot weather. Uh, it's a hot weather mosquito, and it, it, uh, it's more active also in the evening. Uh, the nuisance mosquito, Aedes vexans, will bite you during the day even if you you know are going through the grass and stir it up it'll it'll come and bite you but Kilax tarsalis is is more active in the uh, early to late evening and through the nighttime period uh, and it's really active when the temperatures are are quite warm um, anything above 15 degrees. Wearing a DEET repellent, long pants and sleeves will all assist in deterring the amount of mosquito bites you receive. And along with protecting yourself, livestock owners can also protect horses and cattle by creating a smudge burn, or moving the animals if possible into a breezy area or into the barn during the peak times when the mosquitoes are most active. And when comparing West Nile cases across Saskatchewan over the past several years, Curry indicates there were a few key years recorded. We've had two large outbreaks. Uh, the first one was in 2003, uh, and the last one was in 2007. We had over 1,450 cases, and uh, 113 of the severe uh, kind and six deaths. Uh, so that was a bad year, and each year we get uh, West Nile to some degree. Some years are um, obviously higher than others. The mosquito that carries it is always here. Uh, we usually get warm weather in, in the summer, and it's just dependent on how much virus is, is cycling in the bird population. Travelers now on their summer vacation are advised that to date, only one positive mosquito pool has been reported in the Weyburn area and one in south-central Manitoba. Meanwhile, Minnesota has reported two positive birds with the West Nile virus and four human cases in South Dakota. Weekly surveillance results on the West Nile virus can be found online. According to Stats Canada, Saskatchewan's merchandise exports increased by $724 million in the first four months of 2013, as compared to the previous year. This data shows the greatest increase in production amongst all provinces. With this increase in numbers comes the need for more routes of transportation to export Saskatchewan's products. One of the province's main export partners is the U.S., but with limited routes into the country, the need for a western trade corridor increases. A group in the U.S. dedicated to creating a trade corridor from Mexico to Canada is the Ports to Plains Alliance. This is a non-profit, community-driven advocacy group dedicated to promoting economic security throughout North America's energy and agricultural heartland. Joe Keeley is the Vice President of Operations and explains the need for the trade corridor into Canada. Saskatchewan is exporting uh, about $1.9 billion to the 10 
U.S. states in the Ports to Plains corridor, including Mexico. Um, that compares to China at about 1.7 for its entire exports. So we're a larger export market than the next largest country that Saskatchewan exports to. In order to continue to export these products efficiently, quicker routes must be available. The number four highway would be part of the Ports to Plains Trade Corridor, but there are some local issues that must be addressed before this project can become possible from a Canadian standpoint. First, our border crossing into the U.S. must be a 24-hour operation, as opposed to its current 13-hour format. Secondly, there is an 80-kilometer stretch of highway near the Cadillac area that is not primary weight to support transport trucks. Swift Current City Councillor Ryan Pluis has been working closely on this project, and describes the logistics that are involved in a trade corridor. The context of what we're talking about with the number four highway, we're obviously talking about truck traffic. Um, a trade corridor, though, is is um, is more than that. It, it's more than just the infrastructure. It's it's hotels, it's service stations, it's you know um, whether it's tire shops or whatever. It's everything that supports infrastructure and trade. Uh, in this case, again, north to south. Another stakeholder involved in the project is Community Futures Southwest. Playing a pivotal role since the project's inception in 2009, Community Futures Southwest has rallied politicians, communities, businesses, and organizations as supporting partners. General Manager John Parker explains how the provincial and federal governments play a factor in the outcome of the project and why this could affect Saskatchewan for years to come. Because we're dealing with two separate factors. I mean, we talk about a 24-hour commercial port, you're talking federal, and that's a federal jurisdiction. And you're talking the highway improvements, it's a provincial entity. We are in a, a boom economy and a growing economy, and I think that it's important we recognize that we have to spend money in that kind of an environment in order to make sure we are capitalizing on all of the assets to grow the economy in the whole province, not just the southwest. Thanks to Community Future Southwest, the Ports to Plains Alliance, and the support of communities across the region, improvements to the number four highway and the possibility of a 24-hour border are becoming a reality. Saskatchewan's economy is booming, and projects such as the number four highway corridor will assist in keeping the positive momentum into the future. Southwest TV News is hitting the road with our annual Summer Around the Southwest Tour, covering a variety of exciting events across the region. The Southwest TV News Summer Around the Southwest Tour is proudly brought to you by Innovation Credit Union. Imagine the possibilities. Another exciting season of Market Square returns to downtown Swift Current, featuring live entertainment, fresh garden produce, crafts, and other unique vendors. Market Square, every Saturday at the corner of Central and Chaplin. Presented by Standard Motors, in partnership with Innovation Credit Union and Southwest TV News. Surgery wait times continue to decrease across the province, and the Cypress Health region is seeing the most success month after month. According to the latest data from the Saskatchewan Ministry of Health, surgical wait times are decreasing in the province, while showing progress in the overall goal of not waiting longer than three months for any patient. The latest stats show that 78% of patients are receiving surgery within three months of their consultation with the surgeon, and 90% within six months. All health regions except Regina and Quipel are on track to meet the three-month goal by April 2014. Regina is expected to meet that goal by April of 2015. Here in the southwest, the Cypress South region continues to lead the pack with a 99% rate of surgeries taking place within three months, an achievement which the region continually strives to meet on a regular basis. 
we've actually increased our surgical numbers. So not only have we reduced wait times, we're doing about 400 more surgeries a year in our region. So we were able to recruit a second general surgeon. So that has helped us in our health regions. We're not sending patients out of the region for surgery. We have also started looking at how we utilize our operating room theaters and making sure that we're booking so that those surgeons who have longer wait lists we're giving more time to. So those patients aren't waiting as long as they have been in the past. Shorter wait times and the ability for Southwest residents to stay closer to home for their surgical needs is a service the Cypress Health Region is hoping to maintain into the future with its complement of surgeons. Besides cardiac and neurosurgery, we do a lot of the bigger surgeries that people do go out of the region for. Uh, so we're trying to keep them here and get them done within that certain period of time. We're able to track that too a little easier. We're using a surgical information system, which is an electronic surgical medical record, but it allows us to track the bookings so we can see when the patient was booked, how long they've been waiting, and uh, actually see our utilization rates in the operating room too. So that's really helped instead of a manual process. We have it all right there up to the minute. The Cypress Health Region deals with 2,500 surgeries per year with a three-month or less waiting period for patients. W.W. Smith Insurance has reached a milestone as it celebrates its centennial. Having served Southwest Saskatchewan for the past 100 years, W.W. Smith Insurance is your motor license issuer, while specializing in all of your personal and commercial needs, including home, auto, agro, business, and life insurance. W.W. Smith Insurance, independently owned and operated since 1913. Our company helps tell your story and provides you with a solution on how to market your business. Because making a great video is only half the equation. You have to know how to use it. We have done a major The Century Flight Club recently made a stopover in Swift Current amidst a cross-Canada tour. We have more in this report. Flying enthusiasts from across Canada made a stopover in Swift Current en route to Charlottetown, PEI. The Swift Current Airport was the host site for the stopover this year, meeting the qualifications of a five-hour travel time for all of the participants and the capability to host approximately 80 planes. A welcome dinner at the airport gave the participants a chance to meet the host committee, the Southwest Flying Club, city officials and general public. John Lovelace is the founder and the chairman of the Century of Flight and was impressed by Swift Current's hospitality. I think there's a real uh, concentrated uh, effort to, uh, to do things here at the airport and, and they've really made us welcome. They've invited us. Uh, we've been discussing this with the people here for about the last uh, six months and it's paid off here. It is the best uh, launch parties we've ever had. Lovelace goes on to add that the Century of Flight Club is comprised of members from all walks of life with a general interest in aviation. And the summer tour brings them together on one fixed flight. It's not a spectator sport. Uh, people expect when they come out, like World War II with all these airplanes, we go in single file, about two minutes apart. Andrea Trapani of Nanaimo, BC was one of the many participants in the Century of Flight tour with one of the more unique planes and took time out to speak with our Southwest TV News crew. It's a Spencer Amphibious Air Car. It's a home built. You uh, would purchase the plans from the Spencer Aircraft Company and uh, build this plane. It is a wooden aircraft and uh, it is capable of flying and landing on water and land. Trepanier goes on to explain that the original graphic design she had in mind for the plane was that of Noah's Ark. However, this concept soon changed. Uh, spoke to the uh, artist, a friend from the Nanaimo Flying Club, who is uh, very artistic, and uh, talked to him about a little bit of nose art, and uh, he came back with this sketch, which basically is exactly what the plane looks like now. It's pretty cool. It's a nice conversation starter. Nobody's ever shy to come up and say hi and ask you about the plane, so it's, uh, it's fun. 
And with four years of flying now on the books, Trepanier welcomed the opportunity with a Century of Flight Club this summer. For, for me, I've never been to the East Coast, so it's uh, the, all about the flight across Canada, obviously, is the attraction of being able to fly um, with a group of other pilots that are all there to have fun. The Century of Flight Club has 4,000 members nationally and embarks on a group flight every summer. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.